Hi friends, welcome to my channel. I'm Arpita Karva and in this video we are going to talk about a very important topic and that is how to avoid silly mistakes in UGC net examination. So friends, a lot of students come to me and tell me that they have prepared very well for the exam and yet on the day of the exam they made some silly mistakes because of which they did not score well. And after noting these questions, I did a lot of research. I spoke to toppers as well as students who unfortunately did not clear net. After speaking to them, I was able to compile a list of things that separate winners from losers. So towards the end of the video, I'm going to talk about a very, very powerful tool using which you can avoid making silly mistakes and lose precious marks in UGC net because of those silly mistakes. In the beginning of the video, I shall be talking about some methods using which you can prepare for the exam more efficiently. And I'm also going to share two bonus tips at the end of the video on how you can score 25% more marks in the exam with the same level of preparation. So let's begin. The first important tip that I will be talking about is switching from a complex to a simple plan. Now friends, I've seen a lot of students who make a very complex study routine. They plan to practice mock tests for one hour, study two hours, then one and a half hours they'll do British literature, two hours they'll do paper one and so on and so forth. They make a timetable where they incorporate three subjects in one day. So if you look at these complex study routines, you will be able to find that such routines are never sustainable. Even in life in general, some people are over ambitious. They decide to have four new year resolution before the new year even begins. So on 1st of January, they pledge to exercise, control their addiction, sleep on time, study for three hours in the evening and so on. And if you look at it, we find out that it is very, very difficult to adhere to something as complex as this. We cannot do so so many things simultaneously and that is the reason why most of us fail to stick to our plans because it looks very very complex one major thing that is associated with the complex routines is the mental setback that we have when we fail to follow the routine we have set it leads to self-doubt i'm not smart enough i'm not talented enough i'm not hard working enough this low level of confidence doesn't help one go ahead in life so the bottom line is make a very simple achievable plan all great leaders have always set SMART goals. SMART stands for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic and timely. The achievable part is very important for making SMART goals. Friends, always ensure that your study routine is very simple. If you decide to study for four hours, then ensure that you will focus only one subject for two hours. And then for next two hours, you're going to practice with the mock test. That's it. Don't complicate it. Now let's move on to the second point, which is the right way of making notes. Now, if I'm asked to summarize how you should revise the syllabus before UGC net, I would summarize it by just using one word that is quickly. Your revision should be very quick. And this can only happen when you have the habit of making short notes. It is very important for you to understand that note making is a crucial step in the preparation journey. The right way of making notes is when we keep in mind that these are notes that, will, that we will use later for revision. And we have to ensure that the notes are in such a way that we will be able to revise it very quickly. For example, if you look at my website and the online courses that I offer for UGC net, you will see that there are about 850 lectures that we provide. There are approximately 300 lectures in our online course for only British literature. Now it is 100 hour long project. So you need to devote 100 hours to cover important writers of British literature. So what you need to ensure while revising is that revision of these 100 hours of lecture should happen in not more than 10 hours. That means revision should happen in one tenth of the time. And as you revise it multiple times, you will notice that the revision time will be reduced from one tenth to one hundredth. So revising the same syllabus that took you 10 hours initially will now take just one hour. So always keep this in mind that your notes should be made in a way that you are able to revise the topics in one tenth of the time. 
Friends, another important thing that you must keep in mind while making notes is to always include mistakes that you make in the mock test. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, the faintest ink is more powerful than the strongest memory. It simply means that even though our memory is very strong, we cannot rely on it as strongly as we can depend on something we have penned down. What we write on paper is what will always stay with us. On the other hand, we often forget what we try to store just in our memory. I'll make you understand this with a quick example. If you think that you have a very strong memory, then let's do a small experiment. Pause this video for a moment and try to remember what you ate for lunch one week back on the same day. Do you remember it? See, if you can't remember what you ate seven days ago, how do you think you will remember what mistake you made in a mock test two months ago? And what might happen is that you will end up making the same mistake on the day of the exam. So that is the reason why I'm advising you to take note of the mistakes you make while doing the mock test and write those mistakes in the revision notebook so that every time you revise a topic, you also look at the mistakes that you were making and how to rectify them. I'll give you a very personal example. I recently got married and now I'm learning how to cook. Every time I'm making a new dish, I make mistakes. It's not that the dish is perfect on the first go. And every time something goes wrong, I write down that mistake in my recipe book. So along with the recipe, I also write down the mistake so that next time when I'm going through the recipe before making the dish, I also go through the mistakes that I've made in the past. And after four or five times of making the same dish and avoiding those mistakes, I achieve perfection. So friends, it is important to write mistakes with your notes that will definitely help you in your exam. Now, before we move on to the next point, here is something that I want to share. If you are preparing for UGC net paper one or paper two, I have an amazing news for you. We've recently launched a brand new animated course for paper one and two. We're proud to announce that we are the only institute in India that teaches through animated videos. Our videos are designed using 3D graphics and animation, which enhances the visual memory of the students so that they are able to retain the complicated summaries of novels, plays, poems easily and recall it effectively during the exam. In our online course, we provide you with topic-wise video lectures with rich animations covering all topics in a step-by-step -step manner, which works even when you've not done any previous preparation. We also provide you high quality PDFs and revision notes that cover syllabus wise topics comprehensively and ensure you qualify your dream exam in just one attempt. Along with video lectures and PDF, we also offer test series that consist of more than 3000 unit wise questions that comes with detailed explanation. Plus after every test, you get a detailed performance report and your ranking in all India leaderboard, which will help you spot the weak and strong areas. We cover all important topics, writers and works in our online course. The detailed list of all these writers that are covered in our online course is available free of cost on our website arpitakarva.com. You can even download this free list and start preparing for these exams on your own. The link of our website and all the courses are given in the description box below. You can check out the course details from our website and even watch demo video lectures and attempt demo mock tests before you decide to enroll in the course. For more information related to the courses we offer, feel free to shoot your queries on the WhatsApp number displayed on the screen and me and my team will be more than happy to assist you. Now let's talk about another way you can avoid making silly mistakes in UGC net and that is by taking a lot of mock tests. I think that mock tests have dual benefits. It is not just a self-assessment tool but it is also a great revision tool. In my opinion mock tests are a very effective way of revising. Also apart from simply taking the mock test it is equally important to analyze the mock test. When you analyze the mock test, you understand what went wrong and you try to correct your mistakes next time. Friends, I've seen that most students get disheartened if they score less in the mock test and they just stop taking the mock test to not lose their confidence. But the idea behind taking mock test is not to get disheartened, but actually to not focus on the score at all. Your focus should be on the mistakes that you made instead. 
analyzing those mistakes, writing them down in the revision notebook, revising those mistakes and ensuring that next time you don't make the same mistake is the key to success. If you focus too much on the score, you will either get disheartened or become overconfident with your level of preparation. I also want to give you two simple tips when it comes to mock test. The first is that whenever you take a mock test for UGC net, develop the habit of sitting for three hours and take the test of paper one and paper two in one go. Most students simply take the test for 50 minutes or 30 minutes, try to solve 20, 25 questions and then leave the rest of the questions for the next day. Friends, that is not right. You have to ensure that you sit for three hours to develop the habit of solving all questions on the day of the exam so that you don't feel as if something new is happening and you are unable to sit in one place in front of the computer screen for three hours. Another important thing that I would like to give regarding the mock test is that you must try to take the mock test during the time and schedule of the actual exam. If you know in which slot your exam is going to happen, for example in the morning from 9 to 12 or in the afternoon from 2 to 5, ensure that you give your mock test around the same time so that you program your biological clock accordingly. The reason I'm advising this to you is because like you must have noticed in your day-to-day -day life, we eat sleep almost at the same time every day. So if you have the habit of having your lunch at one o'clock every day, you will feel hungry automatically as soon as the clock strikes one. Or if you have a habit of getting up at the same time in the morning, you will wake up around that time even if you don't put the alarm on. This happens because our biological clock is designed in such a way that if we do something repeatedly during the same time, it gets embedded in our body clock. So try to give mock tests around the same time so that on the day of the exam, it's easier for you to concentrate. Now friends, I'll come to the point you all must have been eagerly waiting for. I'm going to talk about the master strategy you can adopt to avoid silly mistakes. To get to this strategy, let me first take you through the root cause of the problem, like I always do. Let us see why silly mistakes happen with the help of a simple experiment done by a scientist. So there was a scientist who selected some people who knew how to cycle and divided them into two groups. He asked group one to ride the cycle on a one foot broad road. And then he asked group two to ride the cycle on a 15 feet high wall, which was also one foot broad. So both the roads were one foot broad. Now you will be amazed to find out that the people who were riding the bicycle on the road were able to ride it in that one foot broad area. But the people who were riding the bicycle on a high wall were not able to ride the bicycle. Most of them either fell or they stopped riding the bicycle or they just gave up in the middle. Only a few could reach till the end. And when the scientist asked the second group of cyclists why they could not complete the task, he found that those people were afraid of falling from a great height. And because of that anxiety, they got disturbed, they were not able to concentrate and they were not able to ride the bicycle, which was otherwise very easy for them to do. So what causes the silly mistakes to happen? Silly mistakes usually happen when you don't focus on the question flashing on your screen, but worry about other things. Friends, do remember the scene from Mahabharat where Guru Dronacharya is teaching archery to all the princes and ask them what they see in front of them. Somebody says that they see a beautiful field. Someone says that they see a tree. Another person says that they see leaves on the tree. But it was only Arjun who said that he only sees the eye of the bird and nothing else. That means his focus was only on what he wanted to achieve. So whenever you are taking UGC net mock test, your focus should only be on the question that is displayed on front of your screen. You should not focus on things like, what if I am not able to clear net? What will my parents say? My relatives and friends would make fun of me. I would have performed better if I would have studied more, etc. Friends, our brain has limited energy. So we must give all the energy to the questions in front of us. So what you should be your thought process instead? You must only think about the question that is displayed on the screen and you should aim to solve maximum number of questions in the exam. Adapting this mindset would solve most of your problems and then 
you would succeed in not just avoiding silly mistakes, but also in solving most difficult questions. Now friends, it's time to look at the two bonus tips. Bonus tip number one, focus on solving easy and medium questions. In every paper, you will find three kinds of questions, easy, medium and difficult. So the first bonus tip that I would want to give you is to focus on solving only the easy and medium difficulty level questions instead of focusing on difficult level questions first. Most of the time students think that they can clear the exam only by solving the difficult questions. But if you look at the pattern of the question paper, you will see that 80% of the questions fall in the category of easy or medium and only 20% are difficult. Now we know that the candidate needs about 65 to 70% marks to clear UGC net. So if you are able to handle easy and medium questions well, you have a fair chance of qualifying UGC net while also having the scope of getting 15% of easy and medium questions wrong. So whenever you take mock tests, don't judge your performance based on the difficult questions that you solve. Your focus should be on assessing the level of confidence and accuracy with which you can solve easy and medium difficulty level questions. It is not even necessary to focus on difficult questions to clear net exam. Now we come on to the second bonus tip. The second bonus tip I want to give is to stop preparing for UGC net with a group of students who only aim at solving the paper quickly. Your focus should not be on your speed, instead it should always be on solving the paper accurately. The reason is that different exams are set in different manners. If you take a look at UGC net exam, you will see that it actually tests how accurately you remember things. It doesn't test your speed because you get a lot of time to solve 150 questions. So even if you are taking longer to solve one question, you will still have ample time to finish the paper. So you must read the question multiple times before solving it. This will reduce the chances of making silly mistakes. Hence, you should focus on solving the paper, not with speed, but with accuracy. If you are looking for UGC net, MA entrance, PhD entrance, PGT, TGT exam updates, then I would request you to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. You could find us on social media platforms using our username at the rate Arpita Karva. We regularly post study tips, free study material on our Facebook and Instagram page. Moreover, every Sunday we also share quick revision reels on these pages, which will help you to revise important topics in less than 60 seconds. If you found this video helpful, then please like this video by giving it a big fan thumbs up and also share it with other fellow aspirants who are struggling with similar kinds of questions. So that's it from my side for this video lecture. I hope this video was helpful. I'll see you very soon in the next video lecture. Till the time we meet next, happy learning, keep loving literature and stay tuned to arpitakarva.com.